I don't forget that. I am gonna kick off now. So just assume people are coming in now. We have about 20 something people, okay, already. Okay. Great. Hi, welcome everyone. Just letting people in. Hi, I'm Isis, co-founder of Women Work. Really good to have you. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of people joining, so just gonna get, let, get people have a chance to join. Maureen, how are you? I'm very well, Isis, how are you? Good, good. I'm very excited for this session. I well, have very little knowledge, so I have here to learn a lot. <laughs> well, you're welcome, and everyone. Yeah. I'm very, very excited for this. Um, so we have a um, number of people settling in. Um, I am, I'm just letting everyone know, um, we're going to get started just now. We're just letting people into the session. Um, and just as a reminder, actually at the moment, I'm able to mute everyone, but please stay on mute um, throughout the session until the, the question and answer part towards the end. Um, to introduce myself again, I'm Isis Nyong'o. I'm one of the co-founders of Women Work. Um, women Work is a, is a network of uh, professional entrepreneurial women. Um, we focus on supporting each other, developing skills such as the sessions such as this, um, and creating more visibility for, for women. Um, we operate as a Facebook group. I know not everyone who's joining today is part of that, so I just wanted to let you know who we are. Um, but of course, we make our sessions um, open to men as well. There's some men who've joined us. Um, and yeah, really excited for this session today. Uh, we've done a number of different types of webinars. We have different formats, different learning sessions. And Maureen is actually a new member to Women Works. So we're very excited to have her um, lead this. Um, just in terms of etiquette, yes, please keep your um, yourself muted. And we will have um, a poll, maybe one or two throughout the session. So please answer that. In fact, I'm going to kick off um, with the very first one because we want to see what people's level of knowledge is um, as we get started. Um, and the way we're going to run this session is Maureen will lead, uh, lead a presentation um, for about 40 to 45 minutes. Um, and I will be just uh, in the background as a timekeeper. Um, and we'd like to, for everyone to save their questions to the end. However, what you can do is, if you have questions that come up during the session, please put them in the chat. Um, we'll be looking at that and it'll be a way for you to get your question in first towards the end. So we'll be looking at that throughout. Please do that. I wanted to remind everybody that this is recorded, bear that in mind. Um, and also wanted to let everyone know that Maureen um, is, you know, she's an entrepreneur, she's a coach, she's a writer, she's really well versed with this. And she also helps people to actually do this kind of work. So if you're interested in that, um, please, um, in the chat, we're gonna share our email. If you're interested in getting in touch with Maureen directly, you can email us and we will share your email with her. Um, so just wanna let you know that upfront, um, there'll be a way to get in direct contact. Um, so with that said, I think we can um, go ahead and get started. Uh, Maureen, um, as I was saying, she's um, a new member to Women Work. Um, we're very excited to have her. Um, she posted that she's, you know, all knows all about no code, and there's a ton of interest in learning about what that means. I know I'm very interested in learning, and Maureen, I'd love to hand it over to you to uh, to get started. Well, thank you very much, Isis, uh, Adrian, and Janet. So, welcome everyone to today's session. And um, I'm going to be helping you understand more about uh, the no code movement and what it means for us. Um, so, let's just get started. I can see we already have um, 47 participants. That's a good number. So uh, the agenda today is to get to understand what no-code platforms are and how we can leverage them in our businesses and our, you know, to actualize our ideas. So I'm going to be presenting and um, I'm sure so many of you are asking why you're here. So you are here probably because of a bunch of reasons. The, there's a lot of people that I've spoken to and who would like to know more about coding. I mean, about creating apps without code. So probably you're here because you work a nine to five and want to leave the work uh, nine to five, or you have an app idea and have been stalling on it for months or years, or you've been waiting for on your tech savvy friends or looking to partner with a tech savvy person uh, to create your business. 
or you're already an entrepreneur and you want to digitize and automate your business, or you have studied IT but aren't that confident with your tech skills and want to build apps faster, uh, or rather you want your kids to learn these digital skills, um, or you want to be in control and not to deal with the um, with the endless um, back and forth with app developers, that is if you've tried to create an app before, or you just want to improve your tech skills for the job market, uh, and uh, you have no coding skills and want to learn how to build apps with zero code, because that's you know what I do, to solve problems for yourself, problems around you, and also offer this as a service to others. Or maybe, like my friends, you don't have an app idea yet and would like help coming up with one. Uh, and if you are very impatient, as I am, you don't have two to eight months to wait for an app developer to build your app idea for you. And certainly, you do not have $10,000 to hire one to turn your idea into an app. And if you're very uh, optimistic, as I am, you believe your app idea can change the world and you just lack the tech know-how, how to bring it to life. So what I'm going to tell you is you grab a notebook because you're in the right place and there's a lot that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So the goal of this webinar, as I said before, is just to enlighten you on the possibilities that the knockout movement is creating for all of us, both tech and non-tech people, and how you can leverage these tools uh, to digitize your ideas uh, into apps. So I'm, I'm sure you're wondering, who is this lady? So I have had the pleasure of, uh, well, I, I really, really love NoCode, and I've had the pleasure of, um, of attending interviews with NTV, contributing to Business Daily, contributing to Daily National Newspaper. I've uh, written two books on the NoCode subject. So one is an introductory um, book that introduces people how to create apps without coding. And the other book is The Rise of Global Digital, um, Global Citizen Developers. That is how we are called in the tech space, uh, citizen developers, where we develop uh, ideas into apps without you know, uh, coding. So the book just uh, sheds light more on, the, on how non-tech people are using no-code platforms to leverage, um, to create apps that, you know, are changing the world. And um, I have built for my apps without writing a single line of code, each app under two hours. The apps Elevate Africa, my IG app, Webgram, which is a paid one, and Modern Day Africa. Uh, and I have, um, I've also helped my friends, my non-tech friends, um, uh, create their, turn their ideas into apps without coding. Uh, and I will be showing you those, um, are those apps uh, as we go. So one is a Go Vegan app and the other one is a Pro Connect app. And I'm also the creator of the Zero Code um, coaching program where I coach other people how to turn their ideas into, into apps without coding. Uh, but prior to that, I was working for my city's bands at Ditchy Dobby for six years in the sales, sales department. So that's a little about, about me. And uh, where did my journey into no code space start? So as an entrepreneur, I, I have a brother. My brother is Charlie, the one you can see in the picture. Uh, Charlie suffers from cerebral palsy. And there's a project that I was working on. It's called the Hydrogen Water Project that helps kids like him. And uh, when I was starting the project, I, no bank could finance me, no investors could even understand what I was trying to say, or even they didn't believe in my idea. So I said, you know what, this is uh, my journey. It's my brother, I understand the journey he's gone through. So I decided I'm going to be turning my knowledge into digital products. So that's why I have all these, right? I've written the, you know, the books, I have apps, and I have online programs. So it's, I said, I'm going to self-fund this project. And I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs can relate when you can't find funding somewhere. So you decide to do, you know, uh, things the best way you know how. So that is how I got into tech. So yes, it's because of him that I got into tech. So, but when I started, things were hard because I didn't have a blueprint. I was just fumbling around on YouTube, on the internet. And I was just, uh, I tried like almost all the knockout tools trying to learn. Um, but also when I was starting, I didn't have 
dollars to pay a developer to build an app. And I was, I studied HR, so I've never been in an IT class before, like the traditional IT class, but I sought out mentors who taught me. So I was struggling to understand the tech jargon, you know, uh, on the internet and watching YouTube videos. And also I didn't have one to two years to learn how to code. Uh, for me, I see ones and zeros and question marks on a black screen. Mm -mm, I'm out, it's time. Uh, and then also I couldn't find tech savvy friends that I trusted enough with my ideas and so I was just getting frustrated and ready to give up, but I couldn't because I knew converting my knowledge into a digital product, that was the only way I could fund my, uh, uh, the hydrogen water uh, project inspired by my brother. So I sought out a uh, coach and mentors um, to help me that are based in sets and UK. And it's, it's, it's been a journey, you know, learning from them and learning uh, the possibilities of the knock um, uh tools. So, uh, but anyway, the mentorship is never that uh, cheap. So I, never, I didn't have the money when I was starting. So I used to rent out my house, my apartment, and I could live with my friends or my younger brother. And uh, when I felt I was disturbing them a lot, I could just sleep in my car. So that is, that is uh, you know, the, the journey. However, uh, here's what, what I want you uh, to learn today is what are knockout uh, platforms and what are the trends in this space uh then number two your app we're going to come up with your app idea in 10 minutes and number three how do you build your own app without hiring uh, tech people so i'm going to share a bit of the tools that i use when i'm creating apps and then i'm going to share with you examples of apps built using these uh, uh knockout tools so grab your pen and notebook and be ready to note down so what are knockout tools? Knockout platforms are software tools that enable both tech and non-tech people build apps without writing a single line of code quickly, easily, and affordably. Uh, this is achieved normally via drag and drop, point and click, or copy and paste, depending on the platform that you are using. And um, so next slide. So the trends in the knockout space, um, Every, if you look at these huge companies, these huge tech companies, they are actually also going through the, uh, they are embracing knockout. So Google just acquired AppSheet. AppSheet is one of the tools I was using when I, uh, when I was starting. Uh, and they acquired AppSheet this January, uh, early, early January, 2020. And uh, if you look at Microsoft, Microsoft has, you know, the, the Microsoft Power Apps, uh, Amazon, was it two weeks ago? They just uh, uh, unveiled their no-code platform called Amazon Honeycode, uh, which enables you to create project management apps. And then also last year, they invested in a company called VoiceFlow. Uh, VoiceFlow enables people to make uh, apps without coding, voice apps without coding like Alexa. And then Facebook has the Spark AR, uh, and it actually helps you to come up with the uh, augmented reality apps without coding. Um, next slide. Okay. Just a minute. Yeah, there we go. A minute. Okay, so there you go. You have VoiceFlow, uh, which allows anyone to make voice apps without coding. Uh, you have Microsoft, you have AppSheet, and then you have uh, the Facebook Spark AR. And then, uh, so grab your pen, because I'm going to ask you some questions to help you come up with your uh, app idea in 10 minutes. So this is the strategy that I use when I'm creating apps. Um, so what do you do for work? Or what do you do, you know, as a hobby? Uh, so just type in the chat. Uh, you're a footballer, you're a basketballer, you're a lawyer, you are in between jobs, you are an accountant, you are an entrepreneur, just type that with the, uh, in the chat. And then um, name something uh, you spend a lot of time or effort uh, at work or your hobby. So let's say if you are a footballer, you spend a lot of time trying to find football pitches. Uh, so still just type that in the chat. And then um, the last part, if you were to build an app today, 
to alleviate that problem. What would happen once somebody logs in? So for example, they'll be able to upload photos, they'll be able to share documents, they'll be able, if you're, you have a restaurant, if you run a restaurant, they'll be able to check the order status or they'll be able to uh, view your uh, menu. So just type that in the chat and I will be able to see. So this is my agile app idea formula that I use in 10 minutes. And that same uh, formula is what we used uh, with two of my um, students that I was coaching. So you can see here we have Go Vegan app. Go Vegan app was actually uh, developed by my friend. I coached her to, you know, to create her Go Vegan app. And on the left, you can see uh, a, a young Kenyan footballer. So that is Andrew Kisilu. He is 20 years old and he created an app called Pro Connect app that connects young Kenyan footballers to top professional coaches. And when we went through um, them identifying their app idea, this is the same way, you know, we went, uh, this is exactly what we did for them to come up with an app idea. So just type it in the chat and I will get it. Um, then now number three, so building your own app with no code. So you don't need to hire an expensive app agency or a tech savvy business partner to build your app, or you don't need two years or one year to learn how to code. Cause truth be told, if you were to do that, it will, for you to create a basic app, at least you need to write 50,000 lines of code and you really need to be very proficient enough for you to achieve that. So, hey, that's why we have the no code uh, uh, tools. So I'm going to be sharing some of the tools that I use. Uh, one of the tools is AppSheet. Uh, as I mentioned before, AppSheet is one of the tools that I, you know, I was using when I was just starting. So if you look at AppSheet, it has, um, it has Google Maps integrated in it. It has uh, charts, it has graphs. So let's say you're creating a project management app or you're creating even an app for your HR professional, an app for people to fill in their sick leaves and, you know, and, and ask for leaves. So AppSheet is a very good platform you can use for that. It has e-signatures and it has timestamps. So you have all these features that you can use to actually build your app without coding. Uh, in one of the books that I wrote, the first one, I explained the step-by-step -step process on how you can create your app using AppSheet. So app, with AppSheet, you turn your spreadsheet into an app. And um, the next tool is Adalo. So Adalo, you build through drag and drop in collaboration with the uh, spreadsheet. And Adalo is very good because you can actually publish your app straight to the you know, app stores and the Google stores. And you can also have your app as a web app. Uh, and then also it has features like Google Maps, payment integrations through Stripe. You have forms, you have charts, you have buttons, you have graphs. So actually Adalo can help you build a complete app without writing a single line of code. And the next tool is Mighty Networks. So Mighty Networks is a great tool for social apps. Think of it like your own Facebook app, but with your own spin on it. So let's say you run a community, hey Isis, and you want to bring people together within the app and have more features than, you know, uh, than just what uh, maybe Facebook has. So members, uh, so Mighty Networks is a, is a great platform. So members can message each other, they can like, they can comment on posts, they can follow each other. And you actually do this without writing a single line of code. Um, actually, I've, I've used Mighty Networks so many times. I think by now I think I can create an app within 30 minutes on Mighty Networks. Um, then the other platform is ShareTribe. So ShareTribe is an amazing no-code platform for creating Airbnb-like apps. So let's say you want an Airbnb, Airbnb for your mother. You want other mothers to be able to sell baby, baby gear, for example. Uh, so you can create your own Airbnb app for baby gear on ShareTribe without writing any single line of code. So with the features that are embedded on ShareTribe, you have users can view listings, they can buy products, you can contact a buyer. So just how Airbnb works or how Fiverr works. So you can actually sell digital products as well as physical products when you build your app on ShareTribe. And um, the other one, the last one, 
is Stencil. So with Stencil, Stencil allows you to create video games without code. And uh, the, these video games can be available on, on web, on the iOS, and you know, uh, on, ad, on Android. So if you have a kid, or 17 year old i think there's one presentation i was making and the mother was like oh i'm actually going to have my uh my 17 year old build an uh, a gaming app on stencil so stencil is actually another awesome uh no code software tool that you can use to build an app a gaming app without writing a single line of code um so for now i have just shared five of the no code tools that i use and that can actually help you to create a very reliable app. There are a bunch of other tools that you can use. Hello, the future is here. You don't need to be tech savvy in order to build an app today. The technology that we have in 2020 is not the same technology we had in 1995. So welcome to the future. And now more than ever, people can build apps without writing a single line of code and um, when I tell people that I can build an app in, with, within two hours, it's because I have mastered a bunch of these uh, tools. So for me, I use my framework, it's called the ANCP uh, framework. So I understand the app and I'm, I'm able to understand what actions that are gonna you know, take place in the app. Are people going to share photos? Are they going to view status, uh, order status and all that? And then I understand then, no code tool that I'm going to use. And then after that, how are we going to price that app? So with that framework, I'm always able to create an app in under two hours without writing a single line of code. So, uh, and then sometimes you get people ask you, but my app is, idea is very complicated. So there is no app idea that is very complicated. All you need to do is understand from the user's point of view and then break it down in simple chunks. Because if an app is very complicated, then users are not gonna use it. So your work as the creator is to uh, make the work, uh, break your app features in simple, in simple terms. So, and when, when it comes to integrations, you can do a lot of integrations through APIs and, and you can actually do APIs without writing a single line of code. For my techie friends, I think they understand what APIs are, but for the non-tech people, don't worry. It's a bit on the intermediate or the advanced stage. But yes, you can actually build any app without writing a single line of code. And by 2025, and this was a study by um, Forrester. Forrester is um, one of the uh, uh, research firms uh, they predicted that by 2025, most apps will be built by normal non-tech people with business ideas. So you no longer need to learn Java, HTML, CSS, and you know, whatever is all that in the coding language. For me, I have no idea even what is behind those coding language. Uh, and it's always good to be just honest with yourself. Yeah, be honest with yourself and then be smart about it. If you can't write code, it's totally okay. That's you being honest with yourself and then be smart about it. That's where now you go ahead and use the no-code uh, tools. Um, so, sorry if I was just speaking, speaking a lot. So, if so some of the people say, Maureen, I don't have time to build the app. Well, I'm going to show you two apps that we build in a night. So the first app is a Pro Connect app, the one I told you that connects young Kenyan footballers to top professional coaches. And this was built by Andrew Kisilo. The second app is the Go Vegan app that allows you to access healthy vegan recipes with locally available ingredients so that you can lead a more healthier lifestyle. And this was created by my friend, uh, Rispa Wambugi. So it doesn't take time if you use a proven system. If you want to, do DIY, you go fumbling around with the, uh, by all means, go ahead and do that. That's what, that's what I did in the first place. And I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm almost giving up. And then I sought out mentors. So you can, you can actually build your app in one night without writing a single line of code if you have a proven uh, a blueprint or framework to follow. Um, so examples of apps built with no code. Um, so internationally and locally. So locally, I've already shared with you um, and some that I've built. Internationally, 
uh, studio time. If you check studio time, studio time is an Airbnb for music studios. It's uh, the leading uh, Airbnb for music studios in the world. And the creator of that is Mike Yoromi. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being advised by Mike Yoromi when I was working on my Share Tribe uh, um, app at some point. And uh, he built this app and he runs this app on Share Tribe. And he built it without writing a single line of code. In fact, if you read his story, he built it in a night. Um, then the other app is Wheel Price. Uh, it's a marketplace app for buying and selling car wheels. This was also built without code. And these are apps that you know, are running apps. Uh, the other app is Tavolo. Uh, this is an app for customers to make reservations, place orders, and pay for their food. And this app was created on Adalo. Um, and then of course, now locally, the, the ones that have created and the ones that have mentored uh, people to create. So uh, just an overview of what you've learned today. Uh, what are the, you know, different no-code um, platforms and how you can come up your app with your app idea in 10 minutes. It doesn't take rocket science. It's just solving the problems around you and, be, and using what you already know because you're already an expert in your field. No one knows more than you do. For example, when I was working with uh, Andrew, if you ask me anything about football, I have no idea yeah about football but that is his forte and he was able to create an app around what he already knows if you look at my at rispa wambugi she's vegan if you ask me about veganism i really don't know much so you just have to create an app around what you already know um but if you want to create outside your environment it's still totally okay then you also learned how do you build your own app without hiring tech people. And I gave you the, some of the knockout tools. And these are very reliable tools that you, you, know, you can use. They have very robust features. And then I showed you examples of apps built using uh, knockout platforms, both locally and globally. So I guess we are coming. So who wants to take things to the next level? Just type in the chat if you want to take things to the next level because talking is one thing, doing is another. And you should always be more aligned to be the doer than just uh, the talker. This information that I've shared with you, I hope you share it with, uh, with other people just so that other people can know that, hey, it is time. It is now possible for us to achieve this. So if you want to take things to the next level, just type in next level, next level. All right, so what if you could get my help and launch your app in six weeks, just six weeks. Uh, so I have weekly and also what if you could get weekly access to me as your app coach to mentor you and give you personalized feedback and hold you accountable because creating an app is one thing, but if you don't know what exactly you're doing, then the process is just gonna be a little bit much longer and frustrating. So if you are ready uh, to do this, just type in the chat, I'm ready to launch. So I'm introducing the Zero Code uh, Coaching Program. And uh, the Zero Code Apps Coaching Program is all about turning your real idea to a real app in six weeks. We are on this earth once. We are here on a one-way ticket. When it's time, you go, you go. So we, and we're not going with our app ideas. We are leaving them here. So whatever you've been sitting on for years, for months, just know that there's a reason why you're here today and it's time to actually just launch it. I mean, just, just bless the world with what, you know, the ideas that you have. So my Zero Code program is all about helping you turn your idea into a real app and launching that app idea you've been stalling on for months or years. And it's about getting high, not just an app, but getting high quality apps without spending tons of money hiring expensive app developers or begging your IT friends. And also empowering you to build your own apps and sharing your knowledge with others while creating an income for yourself. Uh, this is one of the apps I had created and my friend Jemima just uh, commented on it. So I'm opening enrollment now and uh, you can get coached by me and launch your app idea in under two hours. So that what you thought would take you two months or you know, to eight months, 
it doesn't have to happen. And anyway, the world we're living right now, who has two to eight months to wait on an app idea? As you're waiting, someone else probably is going already to launch your app idea. So please, you, we now have the resources. The same tools that I use is the same tool someone in States or someone in New Zealand or Australia uses. So it is time for us to work together. So in my coaching program, uh, you get my step-by-step -step blueprint uh, or the SCNP framework to help you launch your app idea in two hours. So uh, for the six weeks, so this is how the program is structured. So week one, you understand the knockout platforms. So in terms of what type of apps can I create? What's the mindset I should develop or I should have? Because mindset is very key when you're working with apps. And then how do I come up with my app idea? And what are the app actions I'll have in my app when someone logs in? And it's also about understanding there's a difference between app users and app customer. For example, what do I mean by that? For example, if you're creating an app for homeless people, yeah, homeless people don't have money to pay you for your app. So what you do is you'll approach organizations that support homeless people. So in that case, these organizations that support homeless people are your app customers, but your app users are the homeless people. So I hope that sparks something uh, uh, in you. And then week two, uh, we'll build, so there are different types you can, uh, of apps you can build. So you can build your education app and your social app. And then week three, you can, we learn how to build your marketplace app, or uh, we also learn how to build your Tinder style uh, app. Let's say you want an app that matches lawyers to clients or matches mentors to mentees. So that's sort of like an, a Tinder-like uh, app. We can also create it without coding. We use a tool called CloudMatch. Uh, this, as I told you, there's so many tools we can use. And then week four, uh, we build your app, uh, uh, the website for your app, because you cannot have an app without a website. And uh, we do this without uh, you know, doing any coding. Actually, my website, I think I built it under an hour. And then week five, we build your unique app idea. If, if your app idea is not among you know, uh, these other ones, there are other tools we can use like Glide that enables us to build uh, more complex app, uh, app ideas. So there's Glide, there's Bubble. So if your app idea is not among that, so I also help you build that. And then week six, we learn how to price your app. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of my friends that I speak to, they say, oh, Maureen, I want to have ads in my app. You don't make enough money with ads. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're a startup, you're going to need a lot of eyeballs on your app to break even with ads. So that is a wrong way to price your app when you're just starting. So you don't do ads when you're starting. That model works for huge corporations with huge numbers. So I teach you different ways of pricing your app. One of them is, um, is white labeling. So you have your app, you remove your logo, and you, let's say you're building an app for KFC. You remove your logo as Maureen, and then you put the logo for KFC. That way you're able to charge more uh, you know, for your app, and you can do the same with Chicken In. And so you just change logos and you know, uh, uh, price your app differently. So, and you do all this without coding, or without hiring any expensive app developers, and you do this at an affordable rate. And then uh, part two of the coaching program, you have weekly access to me as your app coach. So that way you save time, energy, and money fumbling around different no code tools. And you have me to hold you accountable, guide you, and make sure you're building your quality app and launching it in under two hours without hiring any tech people to do it or spending more than 10,000 you know, uh, doing that. And then part three, you have personalized feedback um, to ensure you're building the right quality apps that serve the right audience. As I told you, there's a difference between app users and app customers. And then the part four, uh, you have an exclusive and intimate community of 10 like-minded doers, not talkers. I mean, I'm only here because I hung myself around doers when I was going through all this coaching and, and my mentorship. And so you are who you hang around. It's, it's just uh, that simple. So in this, uh, in this small intimate community, they support, you learn from others, and of course you get encouraged as well. 
So that is what you get in the coaching program. And I'm sure some of you, you know, uh, are asking, is it really for me? So the Zero Code Apps coaching program is for you if, let's say you're working a nine to five and would want um, to turn your ideas into an app that will eventually make money for you later on, or you're an entrepreneur and you would like to digitize and automate your business, or you are a parent and want your kids to learn new skills, or you're just an ambitious person and you want to share your ideas with the world. So with me as your coach and my unique SNP uh, framework, you'll be able to turn your idea into an app faster, more affordably and easy. Because for me, I don't believe in paying so much for software. So that is uh, the summary of how the program is, uh, is uh, structured. So, and then uh, if you want to know how much it is, so the program is, so the investment for the program, uh, so if you are to hire a, an app developer today, it will cost you minimum $10,000 and you'll have to wait for two to eight, six months or eight months to have your app idea. But with the Zero Codes uh, coaching program, you pay a one, a one time fee of $997 or a three monthly payment of $384. Uh, US dollars, not Canadian, because I've had some friends and they're like, I'm in, I'm in Canada. So no, 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 not Canadian, not Australian, US dollars. Uh, and if you pay in full, you, uh, you have two bonuses. So there's a 10% discount. Uh, so that your payment is $897. And you also get a two hour live session with me to map out your app launch plan as I guide you. And uh, this offer, ends uh, on Friday, because I'm starting the class on the 18th. And then uh, you, or if you want, you can work one-on-one -on -one with me for two months, and the price for that is $2,000 uh, per month. So uh, the big promise for this program is you are able to launch your first version of your app, and there's a guarantee. If you do the work and you don't get the results, I'm gladly super happy to refund you your money back, um, you know, within the seven days. So you can always, uh, if you want, feel free to reach out to me. My email is, you know, maureen at maureenestaching.com or you can book a call with me to start up, um, uh, to map up your app idea. So, and my website is there, uh, maureenestaching.com. So you can click there and feel free and go ahead. So all the details are there. Now it's time for questions. I can't wait to start answering your questions. Oh, but before I do that, I just know, these are some of the companies that were built by non-tech people. Apple was built by Steve Jobs. He, he was non-technical, yeah? It is Steve Wozniak who did the actual coding. Brancheski is a designer. He built Airbnb. Tinder was built by a non-technical person, by Sean Rudd. LinkedIn was built by a non-technical -te person, Ray Hoffman. I mean, Jack Ma was built by a non-technical person. So it's just time for all of us. There's just not room, but there are mansions for us in the tech space. We can all take part in tech and change the world with our own ideas. Now that we don't have to code in order to do that. So thank you very much. That was the short presentation we had today. And I can't wait for your questions. Ask great, me. Maureen, this, this is great. Can you hear me? It's Isis. Um, I um, first wanted to, I think maybe you can, maybe you can stop sharing your screen. Um, yes. Yeah, that's fine. I think you can stop sharing your screen now. Um, so thanks, thanks so much for that. So what I'll do is we've, we've been collating the questions um, yeah. I think one of the questions, just to make sure everybody's aware that the, the session will be shared um, on email afterwards to everyone. Um, so don't worry about that. I know a lot of people wanted to um, uh, go through it again. Um, one of the questions that's come up a couple times has been, um, can you go through this step by step in this session? But I think we talked about that, that's not practical um, to actually go through doing this step by step, um, but maybe, you know, for anyone um, who there might be people interested in doing the coaching program for others who may just be, Hey, I just want a bit more information. What, what do you say to that? Are there places, uh, I think somebody mentioned, 
Funkable might be a place where you can get good tutorials, um, but any other suggestions of where somebody can go just to look at a little bit more step-by-step, -step? yeah. Um, uh, sorry, step-by-step -step on, on how to build the apps? Yeah, yeah, on how to build an app, yeah. All right, so normally it depends uh, with which platform you are using. Uh, so as I said, you start uh, to, to get you faster, you start with your app idea, and then from there you choose the right app to do that. So let's say if you are building a marketplace app, then the app, the tool that you'll be using is ShareTribe. You won't build that marketplace app on, on uh, let's say, AppSheet. You can build it on AppSheet, but it will just take you a much longer time to do that because the way AppSheet is set up, you, you do it from a spreadsheet, but the way uh, ShareTribe is set up, you actually do it by dragging and dropping and copy and pasting. So first of all is to identify uh, how do you, what, what app idea do you want to work with? And then now you choose the right tool. And those are some of the things that, you know, I, I coach people on because if you just go and start building things, then you will get frustrated because that platform was not meant for your app idea. And that's the thing mm -hmm. you have to know when you're building apps without code. For example, um, when I was starting, I used Bubble. Bubble is a bit advanced. Yeah. It can build you literally like any, any app and you can do a lot of integrations through APIs and all that. But if you just have a simple app idea, why would you even be struggling with Bubble? It's gonna take you more than a week or even a month. So the mm -hmm. thing, start with your app idea, then now choose the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the right platform to build. Mm -hmm. So I, I, guess, I guess in that point of choosing the right platform, cause you know, myself included like if i um i always have app ideas and had the same exactly the same um blocks that you talked about at the beginning because i'm not technical um and i don't have ten thousand dollars to create an app i'm interested in um but how do you i mean i think i think you su you suggested several key ones that you can look look at mighty networks etc but is there like um good places online to go to if you want to say okay i want to create a marketplace app and there's a good place to go and look at and get recommendations and re reviews and you know that kind of thing to help you decide kind of which one should you um you know possibly start playing around with because i think there'll be people um on the session right now who may not be ready to actually go through a whole coaching program but just maybe want to you know or they might be also themselves more technical so they're ready to um you know mm -hmm. to are more self, self able to take that action themselves yeah yeah, so uh, online definitely can help, uh, but uh, as, as I said, that is how I started, yeah? And it was very frustrating because I built several apps on AppSheet, uh, on, on business apps, on App Yourself, uh, and also uh, on the, on, in the book, the first book that I wrote, uh, it takes you step by step on how to go about it, yeah? Because honestly, I, I, I was just fumbling around with the internet and I was getting frustrated until I got mentors to hold my hand and tell me, you know what, this is how you go about it. Yeah, because I was building apps on, let's say, AppyPy. So you start building an app and then you get uh, in the middle, you realize, oh no, it doesn't have Google Maps integration. So you've just wasted your two days or your three days. Then I had to go and build it on business apps. There's another platform called business apps. And then I realized, no, it doesn't have this. And then I tried app yourself and I tried Betty blocks. So I'm just, it's the same, same frustrations, but if you want to get there quicker, just get someone to hold your hand. That's exactly what I did. Cause this is what I was doing. Fumbling from one platform mm -hmm. To the next and then also paying subscriptions uh on so you just end up wasting your money and time and, and energy yeah okay um the now, now there's a question that's come up about whether you can you really do this without any coding is that actually is it really um you know like let's take you know mighty networks for example um you know that's one that i'm i'm i've heard of i've seen people use it but do you literally have to like you 
you can literally do it yourself with no coding, like for sure. Or does it depend on actually, what uh, stage you want to? Mm -hmm. You you actually, in fact, Mighty Networks is my best. I literally do that in thirty minutes. You do that without writing any single line of code. And when uh, Go Vegan App and Pro Connect were actually built on Mighty Networks, yeah. And uh, you don't need to set up a spreadsheet or anything like that, yeah. So maybe an, at an advanced level where maybe you might need help is doing integrations. Let's say you want uh, payment integrations. So how do okay. you, uh, let's say, uh, so there are some payments that can be done offline, let's say like with M-Pesa, or you can plug in an M-Pesa API, yeah, to, to be right. done. Which we need coding. Yeah, but even APIs, I don't code. For me, I, I, no, 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 no. I, I, it's, but, but let me ask you about the payments because this one's come up several times as well. It's a good segue on payment gateways. So are, I mean, I guess it might be different by app, but generally speaking, you're doing something that you would have to have some kind of payment. Do you, do you are there, um, are you most likely going to need to integrate payments? Is that a realistic expectation or? Uh, uh, sorry, no, I was just uh, looking at the, at, the, at, at the chat. So like, uh, so uh, just before that, I, I saw something like uh, you can't make meaningful app in 30 minutes. You need APIs for payments unless you're making posters. Okay, so let me tell you what tools you use to do to create your APIs. So for example, uh, and these are some of the tools now I show people, Zapier. Most of these uh, no-code platforms, they have integrations with Zapier. Yeah, and Zapier is a tool that you, you know, uh, helps you to uh, to do API integrations with uh, with other software uh, tools, and you do that without okay. coding. So yes, it is possible. Okay. Yeah, and it, when you're when you're working with the with the no code uh, tools, your mindset is very key. Yeah, for me, I don't get stuck on an idea for twenty minutes. My my time is always. 20 minutes after that you have to find a workaround and that is just life yeah so mm -hmm. also how you yeah. think working with this platform is very important yeah because you are not coding so there is a sacrifice so to speak or another way you can for any problem or any challenge there are four solutions to it so you can have answer a or you can work with answer b yeah so yeah. mindset is also yeah. key when you're working yeah. with these uh, pla uh, no-code platforms. Okay. Okay. Great. We've got a question from um, from Liz here. Uh, this is, yeah, I think also something that that would be very interesting to many others is, you know, as a designer, as you create apps without coding, is it still as good without a UI designer? And like, who really ensures it looks stunning as well as functional? Um, how user friendly in your from what you've seen? Yeah. yeah. So when you are creating these apps without coding, so the platforms have already taken care of that. Yeah. In terms of the designs, in terms of the UI, in terms of the UX, all that has already been taken care of because they understand that the, a majority of their users who are the non-technical users are not skilled enough on these sectors. So they ensure that that is done before you actually start using them. And that's why you have the Adalos. If you look at apps created by Adalos, they are very, very great apps, not only on the, on the UI, but on the UX as well. Yeah, so they take this. However, um, okay, this might be a personal opinion, but uh, when you are working with Bubble, Bubble is a bit advanced. Uh, normally I, I teach it when we're doing intermediate or at, at, at an advanced level. That one, you need a bit of some design skills. So for, uh, but you also have Glide, yeah, that has already taken care of, the, of, of this headache. So for me, it's always, what's your app idea? And then from there, we now go and choose the right platform that is going to be, to ensure that, you know, you, you have your app the way you intended to have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep going because there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, on IP, so this is, sorry, this has come up a couple of times. I'll get to security as well. Um, IP ownership? Who owns the IP? Does it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I get, uh, there's a lawyer who asked me about that uh, before. So this is how, this is what happens. When you build your app on these platforms, you own the IP, yeah? So if, okay. you, if you want to do, uh, to transfer your app, uh, for example, if you started building your app on a mighty network and you realize, you know what, I need to have more features, for example, and these features are available on Glide. So Mighty Networks will give you your data because you own that data. So they will export your data. Through, uh, they will enable you to export your data either through JSON files or uh, CSV files. And then you will be able to export this data and build the same thing on Glide. Tomorrow, if you don't want uh, to use Glide, then you can use AppSheet or you can use Bubble. So you own the data. They don't own the data. And most of people think, oh, I'm going to be like the first one. No. They have been, uh, on AppSheet alone, 2.2 million apps have been created on AppSheet. You're not going to be the first one in the 2.2 million. On Bubble, they have, I think, over 980,000 apps. So let that not be uh, something to hold you back because these are things that are already happening. And then uh, there's a company uh, called Ayubenda uh, uh, that deals with uh, all these uh, privacies and, and, uh, and, and uh, anything to do with the software apps that you create. So I also recommend you to, you know, to reach out to them and they can always help. But you own the data. Okay. The platforms don't own the data. Okay, great. I think I'll just do a couple more questions and then we can close. Um, I think some people who have joined late are, just so you know, there's a presentation earlier and that goes through a lot of examples of apps and platforms. So you can see that we'll share the recording on email. Um, so just uh, don't worry about that. I saw one of those questions. Security is a big question. So I guess the general question is the security of the apps. How, how would you say it compares to, mm -hmm. I don't know, other apps, I suppose, yeah. Well, because the coding has been done prior, so they, the, 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 the app that you'll create on an awkward uh, platform is just as secured as you know, uh, an app that you would uh, create uh, if you're doing the traditional coding. In fact, um, for example, uh, if you create an app on Glide, so you have the three uh, user uh, authentication, authentication, sorry, hey? English. <laughs> Language. <laughs> no so you can actually uh, like, uh, you can sign in with your google account you have uh, then you have uh, uh, a pin that is sent to you and then uh, there's so there are three ways you can sign in or you can um, so as as a person creating the app there are three ways you actually four so you have private, then you have private with email, then you have public with email, then you have public. So there, 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 there are different security levels that you can set in your app when you're building it without code. And it's all uh, available within the platform. So let's say if you have, um, uh, if you have the payment, uh, you've, you've adopted the payment plan, uh, then you have all these uh, security features. And then um, the other thing I'll get asked about is the pricing of the platforms. So the platforms that I use, I mean, for me, I'm, I pay so, so much for software because I use a lot of software. So I need to keep my costs very, very low. Uh, so these platforms, they range from $39 to $115 a month, depending on which platform you're building your app. And I mean, that is so considerable considerably low compared to the traditional way where you will pay you know thousands of dollars i mean yeah so they rent from three to you know so depending with the, which features you want on each plan you pay uh, more and more yeah okay great um let me get i want to get it kind of a you know, okay one couple more questions scaling um, I mean, I think, I think somewhat what you're saying, it, it strikes me that scaling would not be an issue if there's platforms that have like millions of users using them. Um, but if you, it, should there be any consider, concern about being able to scale your app doing it this way versus um, coding from, you know, from scratch? 
Yeah, so if you want to scale your app, uh, you can definitely do that, you know, without coding. If you created your app on AppSheet, for example, AppSheet is very good when it, comes, when it comes to scalability. It has so many features you can use to scale your app, yeah? Uh, they have very many integrations with Mixpanel, uh, with the softwares like Mixpanel. So Mixpanel allows you to have uh, uh, analytics, you know, within your app. So scaling is, is, is never a problem, yeah? Glide are also good, but when, uh, when I was working with AppSheet and I looked at the features, they're just so, so very good in scaling. However, and this is what I tell, uh, yes, uh, Ayuma, yes, let, let me just finish this. What I always tell the students that I coach, the traditional way of entrepreneurs, you start worrying about problems you haven't solved. Get your app idea out yet first. Iterate it. Listen to your customers. Yeah. And then after that, think of now uh, of how you're going to, uh, to scale your app idea. Definitely, you are going to scale. It is, it is possible. And you're not going to get stuck at any point. As I've told you, there are other advanced tools like, Gla uh, like Bubble and, you know, that allow you to do to create your app at a much bigger scale. And trust me, if you look at some of these apps, I mean, Studio Time was created on ShareTribe. Studio Time has been running for over two years. It, it's the largest Airbnb for customers in the world. In fact, they just partnered with Airbnb Experiences. So when I was speaking to Mike uh, Yoromi, he was like, yeah, this is, this is how you should, you should be thinking about it, yeah? So the possibilities are so many. Uh, are you my books available for purchase in Kenya? Oh yeah, sure. They are on my website and they're just uh, $15. That looks great. Um, I want to get a few more questions in before we get down to the wire. We want to close just at six or shortly after. Um, really good question from Mercy. Uh, please ask on support and maintenance of no code app upon the point of failure. What happens? Uh, oh. That is a really good question. Yeah, that's a, a very good one. Now, uh, I think if you read on my website, I have uh, there's something I call the sum. When you're choosing your app, the, the no-code tool, you have to look, sum stands for simplicity, A stands for, uh, hmm, what do I have? Affordability, R stands for reliability, and M stands for monetization. If you're creating an app, you should be thinking, I'm gonna monetize it at some point. So, and, 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 and for me, that is my belief system. Tech should enable, not disable. So, and as I told you, there's so many no-code tools out there. However, you can either spend time fumbling around or learning from people who have done it. So when I was starting, I was just, uh, you know, yeah, building stuff as I've told you. But now uh, in terms of uh, support, yeah. So you send an email today. So normally there is this document, uh, documentation, this community, and there is now reaching out to the platforms. There are some platforms, uh, I might say, they were responding to me after two days. Honey, I don't have two days to solve a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to deal with you because you, you're not offering me the right support. And then also on the documentation, how easy is it to understand the documentation? So there's a lot that goes behind uh, before your, your app is actually there. And th some of the tools that I highlighted today, those are some of the reliable tools I use. I didn't, you realize I didn't mention AppyPy, I didn't mention um, App Yourself, I didn't mention business apps because I tried those tools, yeah, before. So it's yeah. about using the right tool for your app idea and then uh, uh, scaling from there. Yes, great. And then um, in, in closing, somebody wanted to find out what happened with the app for your brother. Did, did you do it? So it is, uh, it is not an app for my brother. For me, it's, it's a journey. So my brother is, is a very great inspiration to me. Uh, he's fallen off from his wheelchair so many times, but he never gives up. And so the project that I'm working on is the hydrogen water project. Yeah, and it's, it's a very expensive project and no one could fund me. Uh, and so I decided I'm going to- It's 18 hours. 
uh, sorry, I'm going to, sorry, that's my laptop. I'm going to convert my knowledge into digital products. And so this exactly what I'm doing is taking me to that process. So I wasn't creating an app for my brother, but I wanted to understand how do I create digital products for myself in order to fund that project. So it's not an app Got for it. me. Got it, great, great. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you so much, Maureen. I mean, I, I definitely have learned um, a lot. I think the feedback, and we're going to send a quick poll before it ends, so please answer it. Um, but I really think it, it helped to kind of think about the, the challenge we all sit in. We, we have ideas. We don't have the resources or the technical skills to bring them to life in a way that I think you demonstrated is possible. Um, we, I think, really thank you for that. I think there's a lot of healthy debate about, you know, does, is no coding, is coding not needed? I think really the point is that um, you know, that these, obviously these things are built by developers that we can all benefit from, but that there's so much more that um, can be built off of them that doesn't have the limitation of, of resources or technical skill. And so I think that um, the no code uh, movement is a real movement um, and that you really helped to uh, shed light on it. Um, I wanted to share um, a quick thing as we say goodbye on um, our next, um, our next session as, as women work. So if everyone can, can see that, um, very different topic, uh, but next week we are having a session with one of our, one of our members as well, Tazim, um, who is really deeply experienced in a lot of areas of self-care, mental health. Um, and so she's gonna be doing a Facebook Live with us next week. Um, so be sure to check that out. For anybody who's not a member of Women Work, you can join us, um, womenwork.co.ke or Facebook as well. Um, you can look for Women Work um, KE in, in uh, Facebook and join the network. Um, it is women only, um, just so just so people are aware. Um, but these are the kind of sessions, as you can see, very diverse from this to like mental health, um, so, you know, support during COVID. Um, so I want to thank you uh, so much. I'm going to any last thing that you want to say or share, um, Maureen. Oh, uh, the last thing I want to uh, uh, to share is that um, we should not we should not take our ideas to the grave. Just just do it. We have one life, uh, and I'm I'm only uh, the no code movement is here with us, whether we like it or not. Yeah, and it's not a war between software developers and non technical developers. It's a matter of we can all thrive in this space together. Yeah, because a lot of non-technical people have been uh, have not been able to participate in tech because they thought coding, you know, is a barrier. And so, don't look at it as, you know, non-tech people we are better than. No, 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 no. That is not. It's it's a matter of we can all thrive together in tech. I mean, tech runs our life today. If I want food, I'll order on Uber Eats. If I want shelter, I can get Airbnb. If I want to be educated, I can be educated on, on, uh, on you know, Udemy. If I wanted uh, a, a relationship, I can get it on Tinder. So tech really, really uh, helps us. And let's just all be there, yeah? And use our ideas to change the world. Who knows? Maybe from this information, someone will go create the next LinkedIn or the next... Whatever you create, just know there is space. In fact, there's no room, there's mansions for all of us to be there. And so let, it's not a war, but you have to be honest with yourself. If you cannot code, please be smart about it and do what's necessary for you. And if you can code, please yeah. go ahead. We need you as well. So it's a matter yeah. of let all of us thriving together. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I, I like that. I, in fact, I listened to a podcast the other day where someone said that, you know, the graveyards are full of like some of the best ideas that were actually never brought out when people were alive. So it's kind of interesting um, example. I, I think speaking of podcasts as well, I mean, I, I think that I'm excited to see the new apps coming out. Um, you know, we have so many podcasts locally, people starting podcasts every day I see locally that did not happen pre-COVID. <laughs> so I think it's amazing just from a, somebody who, who is passionate about content and technology and local content that, um, that in, things are easier, faster and cheaper to do them and the barriers are lower um, to have more um, local, local um, content and voices out there. So thank you everyone um, for participating, um, joining us. We'll be sharing the, the presentation on email to, with you um, and also the details to, um, with, to get in touch with Maureen will be there as well. 
So, um, and please let us know if you want us to put you guys directly in touch. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank Take you care. very much. All right.